One of the really neat things we can do in MLOps is to use it as sort of a rendering engine. The thing I want to render today is, of course, our trusty old pig head. So I'm just going to drop that down in here, go into the pig head here, and maybe set the difficulty to hard. Also, I'll need a camera from which I'll render. So I'm just going to frame this pig head here like this, then control click on the camera icon. And in the camera note that we created under the view tab, I want to set the resolution to 512 by 512. Because now I'll be using Stable Diffusion's control net, which only works or currently only works with Stable Diffusion 1.5. So make sure you're using Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoint. Just going to create a geo node, dive in there. And in here, I will quickly build my Stable Diffusion network. So I'm going to start off with a prompt, high quality detail and professional image of a pig. Wire this into a tokenizer, which then gets wired into a text encoder. And just keep in mind that in most of the nodes we'll be dropping here, make sure that your MLOps model that is selected is the Stable Diffusion 1.4 or 1.5 model. All right, after the text encoder, we're going to need some noisy latent. So let's use the latent noise generate. And also in here, make sure we are setting our image resolution to 512 by 512. Next, we're going to use a scheduler to set up our solve text embeddings into the first noisy latents in the second slot. And in our latent noise generate, maybe let's set the C to 4443 plus dollar FF. So now we will be starting at a seed of 4444 4, 4, and each frame this seed will increment by one. After the stable diffusion scheduler, let's drop down a solver, the MLOps SD solver that is, and in the first slot, our scheduler. Again, make sure the solver is pointing to stable diffusion 1.5. Now, in order to use our viewport here as an input to our stable diffusion solver, let's create a control net. But first, let's create a depth map from our viewport. And we can do that using the MLOps camera to points node. Let's highlight this and press space and H over the viewport. So we'll frame the image plane that this thing outputs. And it's already pointed to the correct cam. Width and height are set as well. The only thing we need to select down here is the object we want to render, which in our case is the pig head. And immediately we can see we are getting this depth map. And with this, we can generate a control net. So let's use the control net create. Let's make sure we select the correct control net, which is the depth control net in here. Conditioning scale is set to one. So let's wire this in here and the control net in the solver's second input slot. And then after the solver, let's attach an image decode. And we can see, well, not the most beautiful pig, but definitely it's taken into account this input here. So in order to clean this up a bit, let's just zoom out and maybe let's slightly rearrange our tree here. And now let's just add a negative prompt in here. So again, prompt create followed by a tokenizer. And in here we create prompt of what we do not want. So ugly, bad, mangled, cheap, low detail, and wire that into our text encoders negative input. And after our solve, well, didn't change too much. So what we can do is maybe before our image decoder add a cache and let's increase the cache size a bit, wire that in here and let's just hit play and see what our solver generates for different seeds. And while clearly not perfect, let's just use this image here and project it back onto our pig head. To do that, the very first thing I want to do is bring in this image into cops. You can do that by dropping down a cop net, diving in there and in here, there's only one MLOps node, which we can point to our image decoder here. Let's have a look at the composite view. And yeah, that brought in the image. Just for good measure, let's attach a null, which we call out. Back up one level and to our scene view. And let's bring in the object we want to project this on using a object merge node. And we're going to merge in our pig head here. After setting the view flag on this, press space and H over the viewport to reframe this. And now we need a UV texture which will be perspective from camera. And we're just going to select our very own camera here. Now let's add a UV quick shade. And for now, let's try pointing this to our cop net here, which we can do using the infamous op syntax. And I will just paste the expression here. So it's op colon, and then these fancy quotation marks here, and then the op full path. And this one we will set to point to our geo one cop two net, and there the out node. Now, the more alert group of you might have noticed that the texture didn't change. And this is a viewport bug. So let's use a Python sub to re-trigger the cooking here. And just to make sure it re-triggers once we change the seed here, which comes in from the latent noise. 
Let's just wire in the latent noise into the second input here. And in here, let's just bring in those two lines of basically H script. One clears the GL cache and one the texture cache. And that, lo and behold, still doesn't work. Let's just make sure we're going to delete the texture path after bringing in the object primitive attribute. And also that didn't help. Let's just try under OBJ, disabling the view flag on the test geometry here. And now we can finally see we back projected the texture onto our pig head like this, which of course is a bit wonky. For now, I could just maybe clip this in half, just mirror the side to get something more decent-ish. Or if you're into that, you could write a bit of vex to select only those faces that can be reached by those rays sent out from the camera and create another group containing just the faces that have not been reached by those rays sent out here and retexture them from another perspective. For now, I'll just go the easy clip and flip route. So let's just clip this along the X direction like this. And let's use a transform node. And in here, let's just flip this using the scale, reverse the windings and merge this with the original geo like this. Let's also make sure we disable lighting and also in our viewports correction toolbar, let's make sure our color correction is off. So yeah, really cheaply textured pig head. Let's just attach a null, call this thing out. And for now we're done. So rather easy-ish rendering engine for bringing Houdini Geo as a control net input into Stable Diffusion and projecting back the output onto the geometry. And in theory, what should now be possible, let's just save this and look through the camera one, just lock this to the viewport and maybe disable the grid. Let's just tumble the camera here and let's see. Indeed, we're triggering a recook, which takes a few seconds. But after that, we have another version of what Stable Diffusion with control net tries to cook up from this perspective. In our case, let's just go back, unlock our camera and enjoy what we created so far. Of course, with a bit more love and care, a bit more time, I'm sure you will be able to create amazing textures using this and still be a really fast in texture creation. And of course, keep in mind that you can also use our masking tool to in-paint textures here instead of projecting or clip and flipping them. Hope you had fun. Until next time. Cheerio.